Hello, my beautiful souls. I was talking to a very good mirror of mine, and he inspired me basically to make this live stream now. Uh, I think he's cool with um, telling you oh, what's his name. His name is Andrew. Um, you can also follow him. So thank you, Andrew. Um, I would like to talk about food separation. I would like to talk about this whole diet maze labyrinth game people are in right now. I would like to talk about fake spirituality um, happening on social media. People don't actually know what's happening and what's occurring. And I would like to talk about um, the things which empower me, which maybe empower you, but maybe not. Maybe they're just inspirational to you. I don't know. But so we start with um, food separation. So what's people's intention? Do people actually know where they want to go in life? Do people have a direction? Do people know What's their goal? Do people have some place which they get pulled through or pulled into? If you don't erect your spine and if you have no erection, if you have no direction where you should go, you're basically lost in this labyrinth. You're basically lost in the maze run. You're basically lost and you chase ghosts all the time. And this is basically what diet is for most people right now. People get stuck up. And I was saying that in one of the best videos, best rated videos about carnivorism, pescatarianism, vegetarianism, veganism, fruitarianism, liquidarianism, breatharianism. Urine therapy, Shivamu Kalpa. People get stuck up in a certain type of thing. And this is good for times because then people figure out, hey, okay, this is basically doing this to my body and this is how my body reacts and then I can start to amplify myself through different stages in order to see where I want to be. But most people have not a clue where they want to be then they identify with certain diets and be like, ah, oh, this is the best for me. So if it's the best for me, it has to be the best for somebody else. This is not true. You're not in the body of somebody else. Certainly, everything I was saying beyond before this video here, I criticize myself and I see this and be like, okay, I distance myself from it and be like, okay, this is interesting what I was saying there, but is it still true? I don't know. It's part of my journey. It doesn't have to be true for you. It doesn't have to be true for anybody. It's just a reflection of myself. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate everything when I look into my room and when I see and when I talk with somebody, I see the reflection of myself in these other people. So... Um, you seem getting more bald. Well, man, that's basically bad. It's just a light. So, why? No, I don't get bald. <laughs> um, so, fake spirituality and all these polls people are putting on now on Instagram. Are people have, do people actually have experience with what they're saying and what they're liking. Do people actually know what they're liking? Do people actually practice what they're seeing? Do people actually take a look inward and reflect the things that they're presented? Do people actually have any degree of self-knowledge with the things they're putting their heart, their like onto, 
are people actually having experience, long enough experience to say what they're liking? So it doesn't have to be true for somebody else if you like it. So I think this can be very dangerous because people then get even more into this maze and into this labyrinth where people are like, this is the truth. This is what's helping everybody. If you're not on the breatharian journey, you're lost. <laughs> you had more hair on your sides when you were raw. Well, liberty of samsara, first of all, in, with all respect and with all love that I have for you, you don't know where, when I was raw and if I'm raw right now or if, whatever, what my, what my diet is. You don't know, first of all. Second of all, I'm wearing my hair right now like this and it's a lot, it has a lot to do with light. I could basically make a video tomorrow and you would say, oh, you have so much full hair. Nah. So you don't know. Um, also, here it could be an incident or a, it could be a perspective of health. But if I, if I would tell you that health is connected to hell, um, you would basically not understand what I'm saying because there are a lot of ways to health. There are a lot of ways to hell, but health is basically not directly connected to diet. It's connected to your values and it's connected to your heart and the cultivation of your heart, which would bring me into Falun Gong, Falun Dafa, that you can make sacrifices in order to really open up yourself, in order to cut yourself back from certain perspectives. And you see that it may seem that you then have a worse diet your diet is not as raw, but it's not about that. Why do you think being raw all the time would be beneficial? It's not. Life is happening on all aspects of the Dharma wheel. So being only stuck up in one certain diet is not life. It's not a solution. It will never be. Did you sacrifice your hair? Yes, I did. Because as you can probably see, I was cutting the edges of my mustache. And now I've lost some type of hair. I could actually show you because it's still in my bathroom. But you know what? I was feeling good. And I was losing the attachment of having this mustache grown out so long because I was like, okay, through my hair is flowing electromagnetic energy and I have to have long hair at my mustache. If I'm not having it, I'm not as powerful. This is attachment. Attachment goes in any direction. Attachment goes to health. Attachment goes to spirituality. Attachment goes to everything. It can be attaching your mind. You can attach your mind to everything. And it can be very much dragging yourself down and be very narrow-minded if you start to identify yourself as one specific thing and be like, raw food is the best. Breatharianism is the best. Distilled waters is the best. Fasting is the best. Dry fasting is the best. Shivambu Kalpa is the best. Everybody who is not doing this is an asshole. And everybody who is not doing it has a not purified body. And everybody who has not a purified body will definitely not feel as much as me. And if they can feel as much as me, they definitely will never be as high as I am. Because I know everything. Well, I don't know anything. If I think I'm higher than somebody else because of my diet, that's very narrow-minded. That's very selfish. So, 
This is what I call fake spirituality. And this is what I call being very narrow-minded. And this is what I call being very attached to one thing. This is what I would call attachment. If I can't let go of the health that I want to be in all the time because I want to be pure all the time. And if I'm not pure, I can't feel as much. And if I can't feel as much, and if I can't sense as much, I'm not worth to live. And I have to be so open all the time. And I, I don't want to be sick. And I don't want to be blocked. And I don't want to feel the pain. And I really don't like to put any kind of dense material into my body. This is what I would call attachment. Attachment goes in every direction. But I still enjoy life. And I still can work with it. I can work with the densities. I would, li life is a full spectrum. Life, like I said, life is happening on any part of the Dharma wheel. So, why would I say that one specific part is better than the other? I don't rate that. I, would, I wouldn't say winter is worse than summer because in summer, we have more sun, and if I'm a sun worshiper, and if I don't have as much sun, I basically can't live, and I'm not full as charged as I could be. I have to sun gaze 24 hours all the time. That's attachment too. If you attach to density, even bigger attachment according to yogic traditions, definitely. Meditative awakening, I'm totally with you. Attachment goes in any direction. I didn't say that I'm attached to densities. I'm just saying that I'm putting a counterpart onto this whole fake spirituality that's happening now on Instagram. Because I would definitely say, I see posts where 12,000 people are liking something about alchemy. And I would guess... Well, I don't know. Sure, I don't know, because I don't know any type of these 12,000 people. But I would guess that all of, out of these 12,000 people, not even like 5% know what it's really about. And I'm sure they're talking about Shivambu Kalpa. Who's using this hashtag of Shivambu Kalpa? Go on Instagram, take a look at the hashtag of Shivambu Kalpa and who's putting then posts about Shivambu Kalpa, which is originally called on Instagram. So I think I have real spirituality. Spirit, spirit, no, of course not. What's real spirituality? Spirituality is always individual. Spirituality is a very big... Term. Spirit, your spirituality might differ from my spirituality. And I'm totally fine with that. I don't tell you that my way is the best. I just share what I do. Everybody could share that. Everybody could make a YouTube channel and talk about these things. Everybody could be inspirational. Everybody is inspirational. Everybody is great. And everybody is sharing and everybody is caring. And everybody has their own, own spirituality. Neither spirituality is better or worse than the other one. You can't measure it. How would you? Well, I, I, I would basically know how to measure it because if we go onto the very, if we go into the, the tiniest parts of the universe, which, according to my research, would be truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, which is 
the cultivation practice of Falun Gong, Falun Dafa. So Xin Shan and Ren, truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance are basically the only measurements where you could measure if a person is good or bad. So then you can basically also identify fake spirituality. And if somebody is not resonating with these Xin Shan Ren, truthfulness, compassion, tolerance, values, you could basically, basically tell what he or she is. And I'm not saying that everybody should get into Falun Gong, Falun Dafa, no. I'm saying that Falun Gong, Falun Dafa is helping me a lot. And I'm saying Falun Gong and Falun Dafa is good. This is, also, this is everything that I'm saying. I don't tell you that it's working for you. I'm just sharing what I do. And so could everybody else. And that's, everybody is, that's great. So what's the point of this live stream? I don't know. I just felt inspired to do it. And maybe I'm inspiring you. Hopefully I'm inspiring you. <laughs> and even if I would go bald, I'm still sitting here having compassion for all of you. Part of life, right? You grow leaves, then you lo lose leaves, then you regrow leaves because you're like a tree, like a tree tree, like a three three, a 33 vertebra, spine, no cord. So, <laughs> yeah, this is what I would like to share. Life is a game. How do you play it? Of course, the outer shell is important. Yeah, the game has rules. What are your rules? What are the rules you set up for yourself? What kind of rules do you follow? Okay, that's interesting. Meditative awakening, I respect your opinion. If you say the first rule is to be vegan as it stays in yogic traditions, okay? If that's your perception, then that's fine with me. If you think that's the, very, the, the most important thing in your life to be vegan, then that's your truth. But like I said, I was having a very interesting talk with Andrew. He inspired me. And if I'm saying that I'm ingesting maybe a pizza, a salty pizza, and I'm saying that this pizza is now affecting me so bad that it's dragging me down. And I'm having so much pain and density in my body. You know where I'm putting the pizza? I'm not putting it even here. I'm putting it way above me, way more above me. And I'm saying this pizza is so powerful that it has the energy to put myself down into this very, very sad and bad mode. And if that's your type of perception that you think that these things will drag you down as much as they are, then this is called an effect. If you think that, this is what's going to happen for you. But if I'm thinking, well, I'm standing above that, I can eat that and why do I eat it for example if I join a certain family meal and I know for certain that 
what I'm what I have experienced with urine drinking, what I've experienced with fasting is true. But I know that if I would sit there and everybody would have the pizza and I'm sitting there and be like, I have my piss and I'm fasting all the time and I'm sun gazing, I would cause a lot, a lot of harm and anger in the whole situation realm. So nobody will benefit out of this construct. Nobody will be happy and nobody will be empowered and nobody will have a good experience. Because I will sit there in my own anger and be like, oh, nobody's having their urine and nobody's fasting and everybody's having this salty pizza. That's not good. And everybody who's seeing me is like, well, I can't do what he's doing. So he thinks he's better and I can't do it. So what should I do? So who's benefiting then out of this whole situation? Nobody. But if I would join them and if I would be like, okay, I take your pizza. Thank you for this. I'm standing above that. I can push that through my system because I'm pushing it through anyways. And then I drop in certain germs. For example, hey, did you ever consider, for example, switching to a more vegetarian diet? No. Oh, that's interesting. Why? Maybe I, I will try it. I can also be like, did you hear about water fasting? It's like, no, but that's very inspiring. How is that working? Yeah, you just... Basically, drink water because then your body gets all the waste which is inside of you eliminated and you could basically basically become more healthy, which is basically not even the goal for of life, but it's a whole different thing in cultivation, but it's not the topic for, for right now. So you could become more healthy and you could start to sense and feel more. Oh, that's interesting. So I can then empower people a lot more when I join them. And I could even throw in germs like, hey, did you hear about Shivamu Kalpa? It's like, what the, what's Shivamu Kalpa? Well, Shivamu Kalpa is an ancient yogic practice out of India, which is about drinking your own urine. Okay, that sounds kind of strange, but interesting. Um, why should I do it? Yeah, I mean, if you would start to drink your urine, then you could basically start to identify yourself as a whole different being, and you can start to open up your eyes you can start to see your, yourself as the whole consciousness in your own auric and realm field oh sounds very very strong how for how long are you doing and then we can start to have a conversation on that so that would be way more powerful way 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 more powerful and this is all because i've joined them on the pizza eating and I'm still like operating on these brilliant thoughts while having ingested a pizza. But if I'm putting myself way more low and be like, oh, victim mode, I was ingesting a pizza. No, I can't do anything. Mind creates. I'm standing about these things. And so can you. So can everybody. Yeah, Liberty of Samsara, you remembered right. I was making a video about salt being bad. I was talking also with Andrew about this. You know, I think for the general human being, it's important to become more pure and to amplify themselves basically into the more pure versions. But once you've been there, you can start to use, okay, let, let, let's put it very concrete. For the general nine to five being, I would say they have a very bad diet. So what they could they basically do is they could climb up the ladder, ladder of diet, which means they would start to ingest them more vegetarian food, then they can start to ingest more fruits, or let's put the vegans in there, the vegans, then the fruit fruitarians, then the liquidarians, so they can start to fast on liquids. And then we could even go into the higher realms of breatharianism and shivamukalpa, urine drinking, sun gazing, etc. But once you've been there, I wouldn't say, and I wouldn't say like, 
um, I was on the, to the Breatharian realm. I was distilling myself down very, very low, alchemically seen with distilled waters and with Shivambu and with prana, air, electromagnetism. Then you can start to see this as a game where you can start to amplify yourself to certain stages you would like to be in. So you can start to choose and manifest yourself at the pendulum swing where you would like to be. And you can start to join people in order to empower and help these people out. How do I help these people out? I help these people out when I see where they are and I reach out my hand and I join them at the specific rate where they are if I see that somebody is not able to get into vegetarianism and he's only eating flesh, I'm like, okay, maybe you just consider it to eat more fish. And I join you and I support you on that journey, which is way more powerful instead of being like, you're a fucking asshole because you only eat meat. And if you can't drink your urine and fast, I will never talk to you again. How would that help? That wouldn't help anybody. You see then what I'm saying and like how big my heart is? Then people are like, yeah, but you lose your, you lose your hair and you become bald. I have no problem with density. I have no problem with getting low again because I know how to climb up. I have the blueprint. It's very easy once you have the blueprint. Once you have a water distiller, once you know about urine drinking, once you know about fasting, once you know how, how to move your body, once you know about sun gazing, I can switch things up. Because attachment, like I said, goes in any direction. Why do I lower myself for others? Because I see them suffering. And I suffer anyways. I would even suffer if I would become a breatharian. Because once you see, everybody's suffering. Why do you think you're here in this maze, in this labyrinth? As long as you're here, you're suffering. This is purgatory. You face here your own shadows. And you will face them until you die. You can become the purest and purified version, but once you've opened yourself, it's all a question of perception, how you see things. Do I want pain? Yeah, I know where it's going. I only feel and see pain because I focus on it. Yeah, that might be true. But... I would say, like, pain, pain is part of life because you push through anyways. Doesn't matter what you ingest. Even if you would only ingest air, you, your body's pushing it through. And once you put in more energy somewhere, you have to gain it more. So that means you will lose something in order to get something. So you have pain. It's just a question of perception. And pain is basically, we can't measure pain because pain is always subjective. Always. Sometimes I focus on happiness. Yeah, I like happiness. But again, life is happening on all aspects of the Dharma. And it's about losing the attachment to some certain things. It could also be an attachment to be like, I have to be happy all the time. I want to be happy all the time. It's an, it's an attachment. And I just try to, you know, like ramble through life and push through life without any... Attachment, although that's very 
like it's it's tough to do in normal society but it's it's happening all the time yeah liberty of some sort i can't tell you basically right now what's his youtube channel but i think his instagram is let me check that for you his instagram is GD Andrew point seven is his name or GD Andrew. So we have here. Yeah, GD Andrew. GD Andrew seven. GD point Andrew point seven. I really like him. So, but you, like you said, I think what's way more important is the kind of opening yourself to the perception of seeing yourself in mirrors everywhere so basically every everywhere you go you see yourself mirrored doesn't matter if it's people if it's things if it's a room you basically start to see yourself as everything if it's this black mirror here in front of me and you can start to learn and identify yourself with everything that you are presented in front of you. So you can basically pull knowledge out of everything. I would say that's, that's very powerful. So thank you, um, all you seven people here. Thank you for the two thumbs up. Um, um, I would like to share just my journey here. Um, I would like to say Falun Dafa is good, Falun Gong is good. I'm not claiming that, that any things that I'm saying here are right for you and you should do them. I'm not saying any kind of these things. I'm just sharing what I do and maybe I'm inspiring, inspirational to you. Um, I hope you all find your way out of this maze labyrinth game we are all in. And I really appreciate all of you. And I would like to thank you for being here with me and reflecting my own image back to me so I could basically also learn from it. And like I said, maybe I'm also inspirational to you. So thank you for being here with me and hopefully we all see ourselves in the next live stream. Until then, be happy <laughs> and um, be inspirational to yourself. And I'd like to share the three values of Falun Dafa, Falun Gong with you, which are Xin, Shan, and Ren. Truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. I cultivate my heart. And yeah. Hmm. Thank you.